Good morning. Good morning, Lakeside class. How are y'all? Some of y'all are sitting in the wrong places today, so don't, don't be doing a test on me or anything. No exams. Yeah, it messes me up. Hi, Mary. Your daughter's team won. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, her daughter plays for Hardin Simmons girls basketball. She's a senior. She scored 14 last night, I think. Is that right? All right, Hardin Simmons, yeah. And they're 23 and 4, something like that. Do you know their the tournament's next week? ASC tournament. So, big basketball fan. All right. Do you know why the broom was late to Sunday school today? The broom was late to Sunday school today. Do you know why? He overswept. <laughs> Thank you. <Huh? laughs> All right. Announcements today. We got important announcements. Uh, game night is the next event coming up quickly. For those that are not in Bible studies this week. But Friday, this Friday, the 23rd of February... At the marina, 6 p.m. is game night. And we happen to have game night uh, sign-up sheets. If you've already signed up last week, uh, don't worry about it. You don't have to sign up again. Just pass it on. We, have the other sheet, uh, we gave the other sheets to Joy. So Joy knows you are coming. Check which uh, game. You already signed up, I think, Doug. Check which game you want to play. If you want to play a different game, write that on there. It's easy to do. And bring a your drink. Bring you a drink, and then bring a snack to share, Arnie, if you're going to play. A snack. Okay, cookies is fine. Fresh baked. <laughs> He's not writing it down, no. All right, and then that's the 23rd. It's going to be a lot of fun. We always have fun. 30 to 35 people show up, and we have a great time. Uh, but the Tuesday following that, which is the 27th, is the Festival of Tables. So this is very important today. You gotta sign up and get tickets today. It's only $10. You get a restaurant catered meal from Italian Garden, ladies, it's ladies. Uh, if you don't sign up today, it's gonna be trouble because they need to turn in numbers by Friday to the restaurant. So if you're not on the list, they're not gonna make food for you. I guess you could still sit at a table, but. <laughs> Yeah, and, and look longingly at their food. So you could do that. But it's only $10. It's the Tuesday, the 27th. What time does it start, Karen? It's Festival of Tables, what time? Doors open at 5.30 or 5 o'clock if you're from Hideaway. <laughs> so make sure you sign up today. If you have a friend, doesn't have to be a class member. Whoever wants a girl has to be a lady. So uh, you can get them to sign up today or early this week. All right. April 4th is only about six and a half, seven weeks away, and that is Cowboy Evening. And Dave Tanner's going to be this, the guest star again. It's called, where's, where's Judy? What's it called? Where Were You in 62? So he's great <laughs> in preschool. <laughs> Did you hear that, Judy? He said in preschool. Yeah. Somebody posted on Facebook yesterday, what were you driving in 1962, or 19, what was it, 60, oh, no, it's 1971. What were you driving in 1971? I said, a Schwinn. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so that is the, one of the big fundraisers, if you didn't know that, for Cowboy, Cowboy Evening is. It's going to be at Cactus Flower Ranch, which is right down 16 off of the back gate exit. You'll take a right out of the back gate, take a left on 16, drive down till you see a sign that says Cactus Flower Ranch on it. It's red and green, looks like Christmas. Uh, you'll take a right. When the fork comes in the road, you'll take a right and then follow your way around. You'll find it easily. It's $30 for that, but that's way in the future. We've got to think about what's going on today. So, uh, like treats, 
Very important. Treats were, yeah, Becky made sure. Uh, Patty Stewart, Jennifer Lee, and Belva Lofton brought treats today. Thank you for that. <laughs> Birthdays this week, starting from the end and coming back this way, the 24th. Is Tony in here? Tony, Will Skill? No, Anita's birthday is the 24th. I saw Tony in service, but I didn't see Anita. February 24th, Anita Will Skill. February 22nd. You know anybody? Jennifer's birthday is February 22nd? No. I got Ed Lee down 22nd of February. Is that not true? Wrong, wrong date. <laughs> Would y'all wish Ed a happy birthday anyway? <laughs> that's for that's for the future. I just, I, in case I forgot next time. Uh, Karen Vaden, is that right? Okay, gosh. Hers is the 22nd also. She shares it with Ed Lee Wannabe. <laughs> Wannabe's birthday. But today, today, February 18th, <laughs> it's Charlie Clanch's birthday today. You want to sing happy birthday to him? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlie. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, Charlie. All right. The Moors are not here right now. They were in service, though, singing in the, singing in the choir. Doug and Susan Moore's anniversary is this week. It is tomorrow, the 19th. So if you see the Moors running around, they live on East. Say happy anniversary to them. We've also got new, well, we got, what? No, no. They're being punished for not being in Sunday school. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Now, we'll, we'll, you know, embarrass them later. Oh, yeah, I do too. All right, visitors today. We got a few. Uh, Bruce and Judy Barber right there. O.H., Yes, they've worn out their welcome already. <laughs> They're from Ohio. That's right. Uh, Bruce and Judy Barber uh, visiting with us again. All right, and let's see, Cindy Melvin Prince is here again. Hi, welcome again. Yes, we, we told her not to bring George with her. He needs to go play golf because he's not very good. <laughs> if you, if you know what I mean. He's, he needs the practice. Yes? Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, let's do us. Oh, you're admonishing, sorry. Uh, Samantha Flowers is here today. Hi! She's like, no, oh, you didn't see me. <laughs> All right, you know who else is here that was exciting today when he was running down the aisle carrying his walker? You know, have you seen Tom Haygood do that? He gets his walker and he just... That's what the walker's for. Tom Haygood's with us today. Y'all say hi to Tom. Yeah. All right. I don't, if I missed anybody, y'all will tell me. You will tell me. All right. What? New members. I got those. It is. Last week, Andy Bauer and Mary Ann McKenzie, where'd she go? There she is, trying to hide, joined our class. And this week, Ann Miller Schwartz is joining our class. Just wave, Ann. We'll <laughs> we won't make you do a speech, but uh, y'all welcome them later. Uh, good to have y'all. It's good. Everything's cool. We're having a great class, aren't we, Doug? We have a great class. If y'all didn't know this, and we try not to advertise it because class attendance dips when Nick Sh Nick Shoulders is <laughs> 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 so. We don't want to, <laughs> we don't want to, you know. We, no, we had dinner together. <laughs> now we had dinner with Nick and Marty. Friday night? Was it Friday? Yeah. We got to see a, a talent from, where was that, that guy from? Where was that guy from? <laughs> Nacogdoches. <laughs> he was singing. He, did, he was fantastic. And not too loud. That's what I like. Great singer. Uh, all right, and also, I saw Nick when I was on the ninth hole at uh, 
uh, west, we were on West Course this week. I saw Nick drive by, and I was like, I was in the green. He was driving by. I was like, hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. And he's on his phone driving. <laughs> I, I texted him. I said, do not text and drive. <laughs> and look up. <laughs> he, said, he said, let's get started. <laughs> and I found out where he was going. That's why he was, you know, in thought. He was going to visit his doctor, in case y'all didn't know that. The doctor. Not his ear doctor. <laughs> not his ear doctor, no. <laughs> the doctor checked him over and said, you, you look really good. I mean, you're, you're in pretty good condition. You look pretty fit. He goes, well, you know, he goes, you, and the doctor said, you got, you get a lot of exercise, don't you? He said, well, he said, uh, yeah, just the other day I walked five miles over rough terrain, over rocks and around large trees. I waded by a river, almost by a, a lake, and then I, out of the, when I got through the lake, I got up in the high grasses and then climbed through the thistles. He said, I even trudged through the sand. I, and I fought to get the sand out of my eyes. And the doctor's like, oh, very impressive. He said, you, are, uh, you, you do have a, get a fair bit of exercise. He goes, well, no. He said, I'm just a really bad golfer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick, what you doing? You come on up. After that introduction. Which one do you want? This would be mine. Probably. All right. <laughs> well, I've been thinking about that. That's right. Last night, Marty was praying, and uh, of course, she knew I was going to speak today. And um, she prayed, Lord, that the Spirit would use me and that the Spirit would have me speak the right words to you all that have come today. And she said, and Lord, please help Nick land the plane in the morning when he speaks. <laughs> I've never circled the airport many times at all. Did I get it? Okay. All right. That's got it. So anyway, um, good news and bad news. Uh, good news is Rupert's on a trip. The bad news, you got me for two weeks. So uh, that's the drawback. Uh, <clears throat> I asked Rupert about that, and he said they were going to the Caribbean. And I said, neat. I said, where's the Caribbean? He said, I have no idea. Uh, so I looked it up on the map, and there's a Caribbean that is south of Bullard. That's the one that they're at. But the problem with, Bo with uh, Rupert is that he's walking, so it'll be about two weeks before he's back. So I guess he's in the Caribbean sipping Dr. Peppers and sunbathing, you know, and stuff. So, um, uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, too much information is what that is, you know. So, well, on a more serious note, which I'm never very serious, is that uh, I think we're very fortunate to have Rupert as our Sunday school teacher. There is no one that is more prepared and more ready to speak on Sunday morning than Rupert when he comes to speak to us. And uh, we're just very blessed. He's, I've been in this business uh, 54 years in June, and I've never seen a Sunday school teacher that was more prepared and, and more ready to speak on Sunday morning than Rupert. I wasn't, I wasn't through with that. I wasn't, I wasn't there yet. That's the next part of my notes. And we're grateful that Janet finds all those pictures that Rupert cannot explain to us, but we get to see them anyway, you know. But the good thing about Rupert is that every Sunday that I come, I learn something from Rupert. Every Sunday. Like last Sunday, they were talking about the, the mission, second missionary journey of Paul. 
And at the end of it, he always says, any questions? And nobody asks any questions. So I'm just dumb enough to raise my hand. And I said, I'd like to know how long Paul's second missionary journey lasts. He said, three years. And I said, that is fantastic, three years. And he stayed one place a year and a half. So I know, three years. So after it was over, uh, I spoke to uh, uh, my friend over here. Uh, <clears throat> whose name shall remain nameless until I remember it, okay? But she's sitting next to Tom there because I saw his name tag. She came up to me and she said, well, I didn't know that had been a three-year journey. I said, neither did I. He said, she said, you didn't know it? I said, no. I said, I guess we were the only two that didn't know that because everybody else in here acted like they did and they had no clue how long that journey lasted. <laughs> Patty and I, Patty and I were just honest. That's what it was, you know. A few months ago at Christmas, he was talking about uh, Virgin Mary and he talked about Anna. And he said, Anna was the Virgin Mary's mother. And I went, slap your grandmother. I said, I did not know that. And we saw St. Mary's, uh, St. Anne's Church. And I didn't know that. So every time I come, I learn something. And I'm, I'm very grateful because Lord knows I need to learn. And, um, but he prepares well. And I appreciate he and Janet. You that taught school remember how it was to do lesson plans. Do you remember those? They're kind of like doing a root canal, aren't they, for the teachers? Well, all you teachers remember that. Well, and you know how much time you spent carrying those? My, my parents, who were both public school teachers, carried those lesson plans back and forth from the school to the house, school to the house. Rupert prepares in that kind of way to be ready to speak to us on Sunday morning. So we are very, very indebted to him and all that we learned from him. And then also I would like to say a word to Robert and Karen Haney. They do a great job holding us together. If you get the hiccups, Robert Haney knows that you've had the hiccups. <laughs> Including driving by on my way to work to serve the Lord, not to go to the doctor. He texts me, what are you doing? I'm going to work, thank you very much. He said, you could at least wave, you know. I've seen him play, I'm not gonna wave, you know. But we're very grateful for them, for all the work that they do, and I don't know how many of those spinach pies he makes, but it must be in the hundreds, because if you sneeze, you get a, you get a spinach pie from Robert. So, uh, and if you're a new visitor, or if you're a new member, uh, you get a spinach pie. So, they do a great job, and so. In spite of the jokes, okay? Everything else they do really great at. Okay. And what's that? No, she's not. No, she is, she is completely blameless. That's true. That's a biblical word there, you know. And I can obviously say that we are here because of Karen and Robert and because of many of you. That's the reason we're here. And uh, you all are great people and you all are people that are inclusive, you are people that are caring, and you are people that are loving, and that's the reason we're here. And I'm kind of in a weird place because, you know, I'm a global Methodist minister and have been for 54 years, and I'm a presiding elder over this area, and I cover 90-some-odd churches, and there are 10 of us that cover uh, eastern Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas, and there are 10 of us, and I'm one of those 10. And people say, where do you go to church? <laughs> you know, do you know yet yeah, what Sunday? Sometimes I go to Frankston, you know, and now I'm going to Dangerfield every other day, it seems like. Oh, man. Oh, boy, have you been to Dangerfield? That is sad, folks. Mm. So anyway, I said, well, I go to this community church. They said, really? Uh, Bernie, um, Bernie asked me, um, What's Bernie's last name? Easy to know. 
Bernie, Bernie Demur, he said, uh, what do the higher ups think about you going to a community church? I said, I don't know, let me ask them. Oh, they're fine with it, no problem, you know. So, um, unfortunately, I am one of the higher ups, you know. And, uh, but I come here because of you folks and because of Karen and Robert and how they make everybody feel special and every, how they make everybody feel wanted. And also, if you miss, they will contact you too, as you have noticed, you know. So um, somebody asked me the other day, I was at that really fancy restaurant in town. I can't ever, what was it? Whataburger, that's it. I never can remember the name of that place. Kind of like Bernie's last name and kind of like Patty's last name. You know, I can't remember that kind of stuff anymore, you know. So I was there, one of my friends was there, and he asked me, and he said, well, where you been? You haven't been playing golf. I said, no, I haven't played golf in a year. And he said, well, why not? I said, I went back to work. And he said, what far? And I said, well, I got to be honest with you. I said, I was retired for seven years, and in that seven years, I played a lot of golf, and I had a really nice-looking yard. Nobody ever cared. I never won yard of the month, so, you know, I wasn't bitter about it or anything like that, you know. Um, but I never won that. And uh, so I said to myself, hmm, when I got the call to come and take this position, I said, I will, because I had lost my sense of purpose. I just lost my sense of purpose. And there's no, nothing wrong with being retired, you know? And there's nothing wrong with watching the prices right, you know? Uh, I think the Wheel of Fortune is an excellent show, you know? I got no problem with all that. But it wasn't for me. I pretty much uh, flunked retirement. So uh, that's the reason I went back to work was because of a sense of purpose. And uh, David, um, come by early next month and I'll have your paycheck which will be a double of what mine is, which is nothing, okay? <laughs> so you and I will get paid on the first of the month for what we do and all your um, uh, volunteer work that you do and everybody that you draft and pull and coerce into helping you do all that, you know. So anyway, that's the reason that I'm here. So I'm glad to share with you today and to fill in for our friend Rupert and to try to say a word from, from God. Um, as I get older, um, things affect me a little different than they used to. Um, I gotta admit that for, you know, some years I probably, you know, went through the motions of things, but now when things happen, it's very near and dear to my heart, and it and it, and it makes a difference now. And that probably wasn't the case for for many many years. And uh, Sam Knox, who is in charge of our 18-hole men's golf association here at Hideaway, sends out invitations to come and play, and then after it's over, how the scoring was, and who won the $3, and who was the big winner for the day and won $4, you know. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's pretty big, it's really pretty, quite, quite big stuff, you know. And... Uh, so the other day he sent out an invitation and then he sent out a, a, a follow-up to, um, um, to tell us how everybody did and all of that. And then he put a little thing in here that I'm going to read to you if I can find it. And it made a huge impact upon what I was thinking. And if I know how to work this thing, which I generally do not, um, I will read you this within the month <laughs> as long as I can find it. It's got to be here. It was here last night. I, I found it. A miracle has occurred. I found it. It said, if you have a choice, if you have a if you have to choose between being kind and being right, choose being kind and you will always be right. If you have to choose between being kind and being right, choose being kind and you will always be right. That was pretty amazing to me. And it seems to me if, if we would all begin to practice some of that kindness, wouldn't some of this junk that we read about go away? 
like these insane shootings that we see in churches and different places. I mean, how many times have we driven by um, uh, Houston at the uh, um, Joel Osteen's Lakewood. Lakewood Church? How many times have we driven by there? And then a shooting happened last week. Well, all right. All that doesn't have anything to do with the Sunday school lesson, okay? So now, let's see if we can get started on the Sunday school lesson. Today our scripture is from Mark, the second chapter. What? I thought I was. See, that's the problem, you know? Listen, the other day I went to Merkerson to preach. Anyway, it was a really good sermon, and she said it wasn't, and it hurt my feelings too, but that's okay. All right, Mike, we're going to Mark, the second chapter, the first through the twelfth verses, okay? Y'all turn there. And, and what I want to tell you is that we're going to deal with this scripture today, and we're going to deal with this same scripture next week, okay? So those of you that are slow, and it takes you a while to catch on, we're going to do the same scripture next week. And, you know, and if you come next week and say, I already heard that, no you didn't because it's the same scripture, but it's a whole different idea, okay? Now, what I want to talk to you about this morning is who knocked a hole in the roof? And then next Sunday I want to talk about who patched the hole in the roof? Okay? Is that good enough? Now, y'all remember the story of the pastor that uh, preached every Sunday. And as he got up to preach, he'd always reach into his pocket and get out a cough drop. And he would put it in his mouth. And as he preached, it would dissolve. And when it finally dissolved, he would quit preaching. So one Sunday he did that and he started preaching and he noticed he had been preaching a while. He thought, something's wrong here. He said, this thing hadn't melted at all. So he just kept on preaching and finally he was just worn out. He was just exhausted. So finally he quit and he opened his mouth and he pulled out his cough drop and it was a button. <laughs> so I noticed that I pulled out a button today. So. I'm in really good shape today. Marty, you can stay outside if you would like to. All right. <clears throat> Who knocked a hole in the roof? You know the story. The hole was opened, and four men came and let their friend down to be healed by Jesus. Okay? Jesus had just completed his tour of the synagogues, and he returned to Capernaum. Now, Capernaum is a very interesting city because some of us have been there. And it's an ancient city that Jesus made as his hometown for three years during his public ministry. Some people say it was his boyhood home, but Nazareth was actually his boyhood home until he was ran, run out of Nazareth and he went to Capernaum. But he spent three years there in Capernaum during his public ministry. So Capernaum is considered one of his, one of his homes. And the news spread that Jesus was in town and quickly that word spread throughout the entire city of Capernaum. The crowd came together to the house where Jesus was staying and soon the house was filled with all kinds of people coming to hear Jesus speak. And among those with a huge interest in seeing Jesus, were four men who were bringing their physically handicapped friend in on a stretcher. Now keep in mind that day and age, the stretcher was not what the EMS bring out here that unfortunately maybe some of you have seen. Okay, And it's not that kind of stretcher. It was a stretcher that was probably woven together with some sort of uh, bamboo of some sort. That was probably what the mat was made out of, and that was what they called a stretcher. Well, these four men were bringing their physically handicapped friend on that stretcher. And when they saw the house and they saw the crowd of people and the people that were spilling out of the front door of that house, they realized that there was no room for their friend inside the house. And they wondered how they could get him to be near Jesus. So they decided to climb up on the roof and they knocked a hole in the roof 
so that they could lower their friend down inside the house to be near where Jesus was. Now these four men were interesting. They were extraordinary men. But what kind of person would knock a hole in your roof? Oh, except a roofer. Uh -huh. God invented roofers for one reason. To keep them rich and busy. That's the reason. But who would knock a hole in somebody's roof? Well, the first thing I want to say to you this morning is these four men were concerned about other people. They were concerned about other people. They were concerned about the plight of their friend that was physically disabled. They were bringing this sick friend to Jesus, and it meant denying themselves, denying themselves some of the blessings that they would have received if they'd have been inside on their own, but they were not because they were concerned about their friend. It meant giving up a front row seat of hearing Jesus speak to be able to get their sick friend up on the roof and down inside the house. These four men were inconvenienced. They were kind of taken off the path that they were on themselves. And their concern was and their willingness to co become involved in this friend's life without worrying about the price tag. And how often do you and I worry about the price tag of being involved in somebody else's life? Are we okay? It's a costly thing. It's a costly thing. Can I tell you a story? It's a true story. Church called me. He said, we're having trouble, trouble with our preacher. You know, they only call me if they got problems. You know, they don't ever call me and say, things are going great. That never happens in my job. It's always in trouble. I said, okay. I said, what seems to be the problem? They said, well, there's two ladies in our church that don't like the preacher. I said, I've never heard of that before. That is just absolutely <laughs> amazing. <right? clears throat> I said, well, they don't, they don't like her. And I said, oh, why, why don't they like her? And they said, well, because she's a lady. And I said, sir, I'm not in charge of whether they're ladies or men. I'm in charge of appointing pastors to churches. So <clears throat> he said, well, it's really only two ladies that don't like her. I said, great. I said, why don't you go and speak to those two ladies and tell them to zip it up and things will be better. He said, oh, I couldn't do that. I said, why not? He said, they've been this way all their life. And I said, well, I'll come up and meet with him. And he said, it wouldn't do any good. <laughs> and I thought to myself, there is a perfect example of someone that doesn't want to get involved in a situation and was letting the church go to wherever in a handbasket because one guy didn't want to get involved. And sometimes that describes some of us because the price tag is just too much. Found out a little later, one of those ladies that was yapping was his wife, but that's, <laughs> that's a sideline comment, okay? But these four men, they were, they were concerned about their friend. That's the reason they knocked a hole in the roof. Second thing is this. Those, these four men possessed the spirit of cooperation. It took every one of them to cooperate to be able to get that flimsy, mat, that flimsy stretcher, down inside that house to be near where Jesus was speaking. Each man realized the importance of the other men involved in that process. And success was only going to be achieved if every man continued to hold up their part of the stretcher. Failure was certain if one person let down the stretcher. If one person let down the stretcher, failure was going to take place. Those people, those four men, cooperated the best of ever. And I wonder in the church, if we cooperate with one another, how it would be. Or heaven forbid that we cooperate in the world with one another. Oh my. I'm not even going there, David. 
I'm going to leave that one alone, you know. I think we've seen evidence right here in our own community that we have a little bit of trouble cooperating, you know. I don't know what I'm talking about on that, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, I'm not sure, Doug, but you can take your pick, you know. And I'm well aware of that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm married. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. That just popped out, y'all. That wasn't in my notes, you know. You may not be next Sunday. No, I, I may not. I may be coming alone next Sunday, you know. You have a good point in that, General. I know that much, you know. Well, the truth of this cooperation is illustrated in the story of the children of Israel who were fighting against the Amalekites. Now, you all know who the Amalekites are, don't you? Patty, we all know, don't we? We know exactly who the Amalekites are. So let me read you this, okay? They are a nomadic tribe that always were enemies of Israel. As a matter of fact, they, they attacked the Israelites as soon as they crossed the Red Sea, okay? They were not nice folks, okay? And when their leader Moses stretched his hands toward heaven, the Israelites would advance and they would move toward victory. And when his hands became heavy so that they fell to his side, the Amalekites, see, I'm just like Rupert, aren't I? <laughs> Have a hard time with these big names, you know. They started advancing. And Aaron and Har realized that victory would only be possible with their cooperation. And with a team spirit, they both grasped his hands, the hands of Moses, and held them high toward heaven until victory was won. They cooperated together. And because of that, the Israelites were able to defeat the Amalekites. What about that kind of cooperation? I don't want to say this, but do we have cooperation within our family sometimes? Never mind. <laughs> Let's just move on on that. It's important for each of us to realize that we need each other. And coming together in this place on Sunday morning is we recognize the need for each other because we uphold one another, we pray for one another, and we support one another. That's the beauty of this class. And that's the beauty of the four men that allowed the stretcher to be put down inside the house where Jesus was because these men were concerned about other people and they possessed a spirit of cooperation. How are we in cooperation? You can ask my wife. She will tell you I'm just so cooperative at every point <laughs> without fail. How do you cooperate with other people? My children want me to get a caregiver, especially my son. He wants me to get a driver. He thinks I shouldn't be. Well, maybe not if I, if I uh, talk on the phone and text and, and talk to Robert all at the same time. Maybe I shouldn't be driving. But coming together is a beginning, and working together produces victory. And then the third thing is this. These four men knew that the only answer to their friend's problem was Jesus. They were clear about that, that Jesus was the only way that their friend would be healed. And they knew that Jesus was the answer. And that gave them boldness, and that gave them determination to climb up on that roof and knock a hole in that roof and lower their friend down into the middle of that house. They would not give up. They would not quit. They did not say he was too heavy. They did not say, you're sitting in my place on Sunday morning. <laughs> nope. They didn't say the crowd is too large. They didn't say there's too many people here. They could have gone home discouraged and they missed a miracle, but they didn't. Every January, they run the Houston Marathon. And I've run the Houston Marathon a couple of times. And I, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> As my friend said, the president of the global church, he said, Nick, you're the fattest marathoner I've ever seen in my entire life. That's the kind of encouragement that you need. Well, one year after 
the marathon was over, it was the year that it was freezing cold, there were six letters that were written into the Houston Chronicle of how grateful they were for the city of Houston for supporting the marathon. One guy, Doug Langham, wrote, While running in a very cold Houston marathon, I was reminded of the one thing that makes this grueling event so very special. I was nearing mile 23 and my entire body was almost frozen solid, especially my hands. When I looked up and saw a woman step out of the cheering crowd to offer me her cotton mittens, I accepted them, thanked her, continued on to the finish of the marathon. The woman's extreme act of kindness not only enabled me to complete the marathon, but also enhance the great tradition of this Houston Marathon. A pair of cotton mittens made all the difference in the world to this guy. Doesn't have to be a big gift. Doesn't have to be something large. A pair of cotton mittens that you can buy at Walmart for a dollar. You can buy them for a dollar down there. Made all the difference in the world. Those four men knew that the answer to their friend's problem was Jesus. And they offered their friend Jesus. And then the fourth thing is this. These four men had their priorities straight. They knew the most important thing in the world was to bring their friend to Jesus. So there they were, right up on the roof, letting their friend down to encounter Jesus. No doubt they were thinking, well, he's going to disturb the service because he's laying on this mat, on this stretcher anyway. And they begin to think, you know, we've never done this before. They begin to think, what do you think the other people around are going to think? Yet they would not stop because they knew that they had a job to do that was greater than the threat of being different. They brought their friend to Jesus. And my question for you this morning is this. Have you brought somebody to Jesus? Have you been willing to tell your story to other people? That's a question. <laughs> Are you willing to tell your story to other people? I can't tell you how many churches I go to. And I get there and there's seven or eight at the meeting and they, I ask them how many is in their church and they say, oh, we have 25 on Sunday morning. Something to be proud of. I go to a Sunday school class that has quadruple that, okay? And they look at you real funny because they think, well, what is your Sunday school class doing that, that, that we're not doing? And they'll say, oh yeah, you live, you, live in, you live in one of those closed communities where you have to go there. <laughs> no. If you encounter Karen and Roberts, you do, but it, that's, not, that's not really true, you know. I ask those people, have you told your story to anybody else? Well, I never thought about that. And we wonder why churches in America today are declining rather than growing. Because we're not telling our story to anybody. Is anybody familiar with Chico's and Tyler? Do you realize that they do not have a men's section in there? Yeah, they don't. They have a chair. And they point you to the chair, you know. But let me tell you, I know more about Chico's than most of you know about. Because their famous shopper lives at my house. The second one is right here. And they tell Chico's story. And I'm wondering, if we did that in the church, where would we be? Oh, my goodness. Where would we be if we told our story to other people like we do the Chico story? They love to see me come. They just get out the little deal, you know, that does that thing, you know? We know what I mean? Do you all not know what I mean? It's called a credit card, you know? You just <laughs> run it through there. You can get anything you want in there. In fact, you can get as much as you want in there as long as you got one of those little plastic cups, little plastic cards about yay big, you know? It works really, really good. And then she's able to take it all back because it didn't, wasn't the right color and it wasn't the right size, and, you know? 
and you always buy smaller, you know. You don't, you don't ever get the extra large size. You just get the smaller size, you know. That doesn't make good sense. Then she has to take it back because it's not the right size, you know. But you've done your job, you know, and you feel good about it, you know. And there's another place here in town called Kathy's Boutique. Anybody know about that? Kathy's. Kathy's. It's not a place that you and I, it's not a place that you and I would go probably. Anyway, I was in Athens the other day, and they've got one downtown called Kathy's Boutique. And I called my wife, and I said, they have a Kathy's Boutique here in Athens. And she said, it's not connected to the one in Lindell. She already knew. She knew more about Kathy's Boutique than, anyway. Well, these four men, these four men, it's been a rough week at our house, folks. Yeah, I ain't seen nothing yet. You're right. We just hope we the next week. That's true. <laughs> if I'm not here, I want everybody to go to my funeral, you know, and say, I knew him back when, you know. These four men were concerned about other people. These four men possessed a spirit of cooperation. And these four men knew the answer to their friend's problem. The answer was Jesus. And these four men had their priorities right because they were going to tell their story of Jesus to other people. Thank God for those people that were willing to knock a hole in the roof. And my question for you this morning is, are you willing to knock a hole in the roof? Yes? About what? Okay. <laughs> I, w I was 17 years old having not been raised in the church and I, my dad got me a job at the Chevrolet place in Athens and I had a great aunt that helped raise me and she was very active in the church and we got a new youth director by the name of Pat Day and she went up to him and she said I'd like for you to go and get my nephew to come to church and he played football at the junior college and later at Austin College. And since I came from a sports background, I said, oh, okay. So he came to see me one day. And he asked around and they said, well, he's out there. So he walked out and I was underneath his car and he said, uh, um, I'm looking for Nick Shoulders. I said, that would be me. I said, who are you? He said, I'm Pat Day and I'm from the church. And I said, oh, Lord, that's just what I needed. <laughs> 17 years old, feeling your oats and you, you know, that somebody from the church comes to see you. He said, your aunt sent me. And I went, oh, this is not going to be good, you know. <laughs> and he said, what are you doing? I said, well, this is Mr. O'Shaughnessy's car. He's fixing to go to Alaska and work on the pipeline up there. And I'm draining his radiator so that he can put antifreeze in so it won't freeze up. And he said, well, okay, but not right now. He said, you're letting all the oil out of that man's uh, crank <laughs> out of his all, uh, out of his vehicle. And uh, apparently I had gotten the two confused because I'm real mechanically minded. And because of that, uh, I was draining all the oil out of his vehicle. There began my conversion because he invited me to church and I went and I got saved. And then when I got saved, I was loud mouth enough to tell other people about it. And uh, it changed my life. I was, grew up, I was real shy and withdrawn. And uh, <laughs> that's true, y'all. Now that's, I'm not lying. Some of this others may not be true, but this is not untrue. And it changed my life. And it all started with this guy who was willing to come and tell his story to me and ask me to come to church. That's how it happened. Not rocket science, real simple. And my question for you this morning, are you the kind of person that will knock a hole in the roof for somebody else? Next Sunday, we're going to talk about who patched the hole in the roof. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you have allowed us to go extra long today. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you might bless the efforts here and that you might bless our hearing of your word. And we pray that we might take your word and share with other people and tell our own story. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray.
And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you, See, Nick. There, I'm, I'm running late. They're already way up here, you know. <laughs> all right. Uh, Joy is, uh, I think she's in Houston watching the Houston Cougars. They won Thank yesterday, you. in case y'all are wondering, in a basketball game. So Karen is taking Joy's place today. Yes. Okay. So we have quite a few things to um, talk about. Um, so a few praises. Nick's mic, you're still on. You're okay. Uh, Jean and Mary uh, Richardson, just so you know, are recovering well from COVID and pneumonia. They just are uh, fatigued, tired. Um, of course, Jean's 90, so uh, they are still getting around, but staying home most of the time. So they appreciate your prayers, cards, calls um, have been welcomed. Uh, Gary Woods is here today. Um, he had successful elbow surgery. They repaired his um, ulnar collateral ligament and ulnar nerve, and he's now able to fit not only feel your fingers, but move your fingers. So that's a praise. Uh, I think Marcia said you hadn't been able to feel your fingers for a little while. So we're thankful that that has worked. Uh, Linda Sutton and I communicated last night, and uh, she is home and doing well. She said the surgery was great. The margins were clear. There was no cancer in the lymph nodes. So she is home and just recovering and will be back with us probably the first part of March. She has to kind of stay in and because uh, she's a little immune suppressed. But uh, wanted to let you know that your prayers were working and she so appreciates all that you uh, do for her, cards, calls, and such. Bledsoe's Daphne, the uh daughter-in-law had successful surgery heart surgery what is it called sting no okay they put stents in and well as well as adding some arteries to go around arteries that weren't working so she's uh, doing well and improving Linda Valerio is here today, and your grandson Corbin had mono, which if you're 17 and have mono, it's sort of not fun. And especially when you play sports and you want to be participating in that in the spring because spring football comes. So um, he's having uh, CT scans periodically, and he had one that, was, that showed improvement. Even though the liver's still a little enlarged, it's within... Okay, he's able to do light workouts, so we'll just pray that he continues to improve and gets better, and also for his mental health during this time, because that's really hard. Uh, many of you may have uh, read the email, but our longtime custodian here, Jimmy Coonan, passed away this week. She had a stroke uh, two weeks ago, and she uh, went home, and I know she's happy to be talking with Jesus and praising him in heaven. She um, meant a lot to everybody, and we loved her dearly here. She did a lot of things behind the scenes, not just cleaning. She knew everyone and cared about everyone, would ask me all the time about people, and uh, was, was a great prayer warrior. She would sing and pray as she went through the church. If you ever ran into her, you would know that, uh, her, her doing it. So she is dearly missed and uh, her service is going to be not tomorrow but a week from tomorrow at 10 o'clock here at the church so if you uh, have a chance um, it would be great we t I told her daughter that there are many stories that they would love to hear about their mother and how much she meant to this church and I think it would be uplifting and help them in their time of grief and losing her so um, if you can put that on your calendar uh, Linda Cox, Mac is here, but Linda, uh, the pain in her knees is really debilitating. And so she's having a surgical nerve block procedure on her knees in Dallas um, Friday, Friday morning, the 23rd. So if you will remember Linda this week and Mac as he cares for Linda, um, it's nothing is um, more debilitating than being debilitated and being in pain. So we'll pray for that. 
Angie Baggert, good news, is home at, following her esophageal surgery. She said she's pr swallowing pretty well. But how many of you have ever had air trapped inside after surgery? Uh, uh, it is the most painful thing. It is worse than surgery almost because it gets up in your shoulders. It travels and gets behind your shoulders, and there's nothing really you can do. It's just trapped in there, so you have to get up and you have to move around uh, and try to get it out. So she said that's the only thing she's got going on. And then, but it, at the first part of March, March 6th, she's going to have her second surgery, which she has um, thyroid cancer, but she's going to have half of her thyroid removed because she still wants to be able to sing. So we're going to, she's going to do that to try to maintain her voice and be able to sing. Uh, so be in prayer for Angie. Um, Coy Wilson, he and his wife Brenda, Coy had to have, um, he had multiple surgeries to try and prevent his really poor vascular uh, circulation in his legs. And unfortunately, he had to lose part of one of his legs. So he had that amputated. Brenda sent a text and said that hopefully um, he's in rehab now and he may get to come home on Tuesday. And... Um, He's going to be in a wheelchair for a while, so I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work for them with her and him. So let's just be in prayer for both of them as they prepare for him to come home. And uh, we may have to do some things to help that situation, maybe with some ramps or something like that, as I'm looking at David. <laughs> um, <laughs> David. David looks at me and he goes, I know, okay. So Phyllis uh, Fortenberry is home from rehab, which is a good thing. Um, we just need to pray that she can eat and that her swallowing uh, improves and that she gets some strength because she is just so weak. Um, she got home, blood pressure was below 100, ended up back in the ER, had to have an IV, but it lifted her blood pressure, helped her get back uh, to being able to, and she had a little bit of an infection starting, so they gave her some antibiotics but she is home. Dawn told me yesterday she did uh, some arm uh, weights and uh, tried to do some leg lifts and things to get her strength in her legs. But she's still in a wheelchair, so we need to help her get strength to be able to stand and walk on her own and to be able to eat and get her strength back and some energy. So that would be pray a big prayer for her. Omer let me know, uh, well, Sue let me know that Omer finished his second round of chemo yet, uh, Thursday, um, is feeling good, had a CAT scan on Wednesday and learned Friday that the tumors have shrunk and continue to shrink. One of the larger tumors is down to 50%. So um, he gets a three-week reprieve, he said. He told us at a party we were at Monday that he gets a three-week reprieve, and so he and his wife are going to uh, Colorado to visit the kids. So uh, then he'll come back, and he'll do a third round, and we'll see how it goes from there. But that's a big praise for them, but pray for their safe travel. And then, uh, of, of course, Ann Hamilton, we just continue to pray for her. She kind of has good days and bad. Is that right, Mayfields? They check on her a lot. Uh, consistently and then Margaret and Jerry Malone are still um, they're both going to rehab to hopefully get strength so they're not able to be at home because they can't care for themselves or each other so lots of prayers did I miss any Karen, yes uh-huh Okay. And she's very excited. We're telling her she's going to be the Mayberry breeder. <laughs> and she's so outgoing. Yes. 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 That's good. She don't remember leaving her little home that she had grew up. Yes. So I pray that this will be a wonderful experience for her. Mm -hmm. And that the boys can get everything settled here. Okay. Uh, if you didn't hear that, Connie Job, who used to go here a long time ago, she has some pretty severe memory issues. She's come up a couple of times with you of late. Um, 
But she is now going to be leaving her home here. Her sons are getting her acclimated, uh, and she is moving to a memory care facility in Denton, uh, but is currently happy about that. So we hope she maintains that happiness and will, because of her memory issues, won't be so, so sad that she's left her home here. All right, so we'll pray for that. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And John, too? Yeah. So John and Janice Abbott, she was a member of this class for a long time, but hasn't been in quite a while due to her health issues, and she's been suffering some strokes. Not sure if she's still in the hospital, but if you don't mind putting Janice and John on your prayer list. All right? Did you begin Keytruda this week? You. Oh, but did you? Awesome. All right. Jerry began his Keytruda treatment for his bladder cancer this week and is doing great. Sang with us in choir. And he'll hound you if you sing. He will come find you. He's the best recruiter for choir. He tells the choir story well. Mary. That's a praise. You keep going. I know. little engine that could. So Mary has been suffering with some pain, especially in her back. Uh, she broke her femur last year. And uh, I know, May 1st of last year. But has recovered from that, but uh, still continues to experience pain. And they don't know what's going on. But she had four MRIs at a time on uh, Thursday. But she's waiting for the results. Yes, she did enjoy it. She didn't hate it. It was pleasant. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for uh, the many blessings that you've given us, Lord. And we know you're the great healer, the great comforter, the great physician. And Lord, most of all, that you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior. Let us keep in mind that which Nick taught us today, that kindness and telling our story will help others see Jesus and bring them to you. We just uh, pray for all of those who are hurt, infirmed, uh, d sad, depressed, that uh, need you, Lord, not just in our class, but, Lord, in our world, um, so that we may learn to live with each other in a spirit of cooperation and peace. We just ask that you be with us as we go, tr be with those who are traveling, and bring them back to us safely. And thank you, Lord, for the beautiful weather, even in the cold. And we all thank you if, and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.